Hey everybody, welcome to season two, episode two, two. Afterthought. Two, two. Pretty impressed today, Austin. We have an amazing studio audience, and by we amazing do. studio audience, <laughs> I mean a studio audience of one. Bing, 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 bing. Teresa Blakeney is in the hell. In the hizzy. Isn't that? I'm so excited right now. The great thing is, is that her brain is being repaired <laughs> to such a way she said, I want to come hear this podcast. Yeah. Which makes me think. The brain swelling was all through season one, and she doesn't remember one of our shows. It just makes me happy that even with her brain kind of being foggy, she still knows what greatness is. She does. She was like, (laughs) something tells me uh, I need to go hear the podcast. (laughs) Well, actually, we have a studio audience of two. Yeah. We have Teresa, but we have... And Faith. (laughs) Which, by the way, we're going to get that. We're going to get that Faith cam. Mm -hmm. And the Faith mic. Mm -hmm. I want to know through the... She do, do it, do it, do it right now, and then post that picture so everyone sees you guys. You did. I like how she threw up in last week's episode the little like you can give. Did you see that? <laughs> it's like you can give to the camera or to the microphone. I'm like that was so awesome because we were kind of joking, but then it popped up. I was like, oh, we're we're real, yeah, real. no, like we're legit, legit, yeah. Okay, but I got uh, I went kind of serious last week on some mm-hmm. questions for you, but I've got a couple fun ones today. Okay, you lead up maybe. Teresa will think of a question for us today. Yeah. It's just random questions. But would there be a question you want me and Austin to answer that everyone would get to know? If there's a question that you think... Think about it. We got some. If there's a question we'll you back. would think everyone needs to know about us, you can ask it. Be thinking about it. you got plenty of time. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> she's really excited. You know, you, she's know going, she, you know she's back right now when she's like, you guys are idiots. Yeah. Okay, question number one. Question number one. What's the weirdest thing a guest in your house has ever done? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, this is a true story. Not that I would make up a story, but <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> I'm asking you. For and she's story. here. There was a guy that came to our house one time to interview me for a job at his church. He went into our bathroom. He farted. <laughs> And pooped so loud (laughs) that we thought it was fake. (laughs) He went in the bathroom and it was, (laughs) wasn't it, Teresa? It was the, and it wasn't like one fart. It was a steady five minutes of farts and pooping, which we were like the whole time going. And then they had, he had two friends with him and uh-huh. they were just talking louder to try to like talk <laughs> louder. Weren't they? they were trying to talk louder over his noises in the bathroom. And then he came out and acted like everything Nothing was fine. Happened. <laughs> so when they left, as soon as they shut the door, Teresa goes, was that real? Was that real? That She's like, I think that was part of the interview pro- process to see if you would talk about him while he's in there just turning, like we went into the bathroom to see if the bathroom needed to be repainted. It was horrible. <laughs> the daddy daycare situation then, where you're looking at the ceiling. <laughs> and then the church hired us. And then the funny thing was, is like, then the guy that hired me, he goes, dude, I can't believe you're coming on staff after the guy that we sent out there to see you destroyed your bathroom. I'm like, oh my gosh, we <laughs> thought that it was fake. And then as soon as they got outside, the other guys punched him. They were like, bro, what the heck? We try to talk louder to cover up your sounds <laughs> coming out of the bathroom. And then he's like, I couldn't help but do my stomach hurt so bad. <laughs> so what it was like one of the funniest stories ever in our house that the dude just, and I don't mean it was like he went to the bathroom. I mean, he, he crushed the bathroom <laughs> and we, in such a way, we, you know, who That's loves bold. this story? Faith's grandma. <laughs> She's, this is gonna be she is going to hate anytime we talk yeah. about this kind of stuff. She hates it. Yeah. But tr- funny story. I don't. You were alive, but you probably don't remember. I don't remember. Kid. I wish I remembered, but I don't. That's one of those stories <laughs> that mom brain might have been swollen, but she will forever remember that story. <laughs> That's one she will never forget. Yeah. Okay, I got a story for you. What mythological creature do you wish was real? A dragon. Oh man. I don't know. I just think that would be super cool. Oh, yeah, like alive today. Yeah. Like, I literally watched How to Train Your Dragon last week, and I was like, this would be so cool if you could just, like, ride dragons and they were all chill. I've never seen that movie. 
It's a great one. Have I think s- they have, have like the movie? four. Have you seen it? It's a, wow, I'm the only one. Okay. Wow. But it's, it's a great film. Everyone who's seen it at home and is just like, you need to see it, please comment so they actually watch it. I've never seen it. I want to see it though. But a dragon. A you movie. wish a dragon. Like like normal size dragon? or like Yeah, you know, like Pete's dragon. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask you <laughs> a second question as a follow up to that one. Okay. On my next time. Okay. <laughs> So you ask me a question, and then I'm asking you a follow-up question to that question to see if you respond in the way I think you're going to respond. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite theme park ride ever? I don't know, man, because here's the crazy thing. King's Island days, that was, like, nostalgic for me. So, like, back in the day, the Beast was, like, the fastest roller coaster, like, at that time in the world, like a wooden roller coaster. It was fast. They also had the Screaming Demon, which was an awesome roller coaster. But then once you go to Universal and you ride, we love the Hulk. Like, I love the yeah. Hulk. Because when the Hulk first came out, there was nothing like it. Then we just rode the one. The Velocicoaster. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that one's, that one's pretty good. So I, I might have to say maybe the Hulk because I love the Hulk so much. But the Velocicoaster was amazing. Yeah. It's a close toss-up. But the Velocicoaster was really smooth. Very smooth and very fast, which was fun. Now, Mom and I just rode Tron, which was awesome, but it lasts like 12 seconds. Yeah, it was like the shortest ride It ever. is the shortest ride on the planet, but it was awesome. When you lay down on the motorcycle or whatever that is, that thing was fire. Best 10 seconds of your life. Best 10 second <laughs> roller coaster I've ever been on. But I still think Hulk. What do you think, honey? Best roller coaster ever. Yeah, yeah, Hulk. See, I think Dueling Dragons was my favorite growing up, and they closed Dueling it down. Dragons was great too. Yeah, they changed it. Dang it! Going back to dragons, okay. you know. On, okay, on so here's, here's my follow up question for you. Ready? Okay. What massive animal do you think would be the best pet if it was the size of a cat? Massive animal. Mm-hmm. It's the size of a cat. I think an elephant would be pretty cool. I can't believe you said that because I was actually. Is that what you were thinking? (laughs) How awesome would an elephant be as a pet if it was the size of a cat? Right. I feel like elephants are like, they want to be cuddled. They're just too big to be cuddled. So if you get cold at night, just take their trunk and like, (laughs) they choke you out. (laughs) Choke you out. (laughs) Help you fall asleep. Is that, that yeah. Can you imagine washing that thing? It could wash itself. That's (laughs) true. Right. That'd be awesome. Self care. And it's not as gross as I was going to say, itself, no, so. I can't believe you said that, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. Faith, what do you think? What's the answer to that question? Yes. What, <laughs> what animal do you think, large animal, do you think would be the best if it was the size of a cat? Yes, elephant. Okay, elephant, yes, and? I was going to say rhino. Uh, rhinos uh, are pretty cool. I would think, too, both, both rhino or elephant in that same genre. Yeah, in genre, that realm. Genre? Species? I don't know. What would it be? Genre, species, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> kind? <laughs> Teresa, you have a question for us? <sighs> She's doing this right here. Okay, I got one more and mom can answer it. Okay. Oh, this one's for mom? Yeah. Okay. If you had to live the life of someone in the Bible, who would you pick? Like you couldn't change anything. You would just live the life of that person. Who would you want to be? Processing. We need to play some music over this faith. Okay. Oh, that would be fun. You think prison Joseph and the sleep? amazing <laughs> Technicolor dream coat Joseph or like Joseph Mary's Mary's husband? Yeah. Oh, you know who I thought she was gonna say that I would say? Who? Joshua. Joshua's cool. Well, I, would pick I thought you were gonna say Joshua. Because you started, and I was like, oh, she said, Joseph. I don't know. I think the, the years in prison would do it for me. I just, I just feel like he went through so much. You would love to experience that. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the way he comes through, I don't know. I just mm. think he's Yeah. I would love to live the life of Joseph, but as the musical version. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph I had to back away from the mic, Faith, because that was the <laughs> that one remember, got me. Just remember that. If you haven't seen Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat musical, 
Watch it. It's fantastic. Watch it before How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Maybe. Which by my mom and I started watching Oppenheimer. 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 Like we started like seven days ago and it's still going. <laughs> it's a twelve hour movie. Just oh my gosh. Ah. <laughs> I'd rather watch. You could watch How to Train Your Dragon seventy four times before that one ends. Maybe. All right, we get into this. Um, freedom part two. Freedom part two. Freedom part two. We got little questions today. We're turning yep. the corner from pet elephants to freedom through Jesus Christ. Before mm-hmm. you jump in, we oh, have, okay. We have uh, twenty minutes on the clock, so watch it. <laughs> watch it, everybody. <laughs> twenty minutes. We'll watch be here clock. for a while. We have twenty minutes. <laughs> Keep a close eye. 20 minutes. <laughs> I knew that would get you. That was good. <laughs> I just kicked the mic like four times. I did Faith too. is like, dang it, stop touching the mic. I can't help myself. Sorry, my you notice we're, we're, we're sitting like all like, because we don't want to get close to the mic. I'm just going to talk like this. Okay, do the, let's just do this the whole interview. Right. I, I did that just for Faith. Um, I feel like I have scoliosis. <laughs> here's, the, here's the first question. Remember getting scoliosis test in school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weirdest thing on the planet it, just it was the weirdest thing do they spine. think they still do that I don't know honestly I haven't been to the doctor in like seven years so I haven't you haven't the dentist long. asked me yesterday when you're coming I'm like I don't yeah, know yeah I haven't been to the dentist in like seven and years either so freeze it too yeah healthy hopefully <laughs> okay alright question number one alright so we started off uh, the year with mm-hmm. the time of prayer and fasting yep was that intentional with this year being about freedom yeah it was because I feel like Remember how we talked about last week, some things, some miracles won't happen in your life without prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of times that we get um, in life, you get caught in a rut, you get caught in a routine, right? And we do the same old, same old, same old, same old. It's like kind of like with with my diet. Uh, You know, I don't have the same meal. I might have the same calorie intake or whatever, but I'm changing it up because you can't just get used to the same things over your body get used right. to it. or the same exercises. If you do the same chest exercises every time you go in, it's going to become like your body's not going to be impacted as much if you don't change it up. I think the same thing happens with us spiritually. We get stuck in ruts and I'm not reading the Bible. I'm not in prayer. I'm not. And so I think fasting kind of helps flip that on its head and give you a little bit of a change in your spiritual life. To help you get impacted, maybe, or receive God's word, or hear God's word, uh, or live God's word a little differently. So, with freedom this year being our word, I wanted to start the year out kind of just changing things up and getting people to um, do things maybe a little spiritually different to to enhance that spiritual walk or that lifestyle, so that they can receive from God in a way they've never experienced God because they're doing something they've never done before. For sure. Yeah. No, I love that. I, I think it, it's been good for me personally yeah. i mean we've only done it for a week but yeah. it's been it's been cool because um so i'm fasting social media and youtube I'm and sure. a lot of people like delete it off their phone i've kept it on my phone yeah. for the purpose of every time i click on it i realize that i'm doing it so i'm just like okay i stop and then yep. i pray about yep. it because i'm like this is how many times i even knowing i'm fasting i've clicked on it like five times even yep. just today and yep. i'm like oh my gosh i really need to this it's is, almost like an addiction it, yeah yeah and i realize how many times I, I, that's what i'm doing too so Every time I go to it, I'm like, oh my gosh. I, and I open it up and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yep. it's just become second nature, you know, and which prayer should be for us, yep. you know? So it's good. And uh, for, for you guys out there, what, what in your life, like we're talking about yeah. right now, it, maybe you're fasting something that maybe you could be fasting something else as well, add on yeah. to it that you don't really realize has a hold on you, but it does if you really just think about it. It a really does. Bit. It does. So that was my intentionality behind freedom was yeah. getting people to do something different spiritually to enhance their life differently in 2024. Yeah, that's great. Okay, number two. Uh, I think it's kind of a hard concept for people to grasp grasp um, that we don't have to work to earn our freedom. It's, right. it's simply just there and we have to accept it. Um, so how can you encourage everyone at home that we just have to trust God and simply receive his gift of freedom? I don't know why it is... I don't know why our brains somehow think we have to earn God's love, earn our salvation, um, make, earn his trust. I, 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 don't, I don't know why somehow we think this. Maybe because in life we have to work for everything. Yeah. If you want a paycheck, you got to work for it. Nothing comes for free, which is why the goodness of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, salvation of God, it, it doesn't make sense to us that all we do is ask and receive. There's nothing we have to do on our part except release ourselves give our hearts to get his um his life um 
I don't, and I don't know how to say that because I think even in my own mind, there's times when I, let's say, mom and I, are, 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 we read the Bible every day together. We have a time of prayer and, and reading and stuff together. But let's say we miss a couple days or something like that. I don't know why. I feel guilty for whatever reason to think, oh my gosh, Jesus is probably so uh, upset with me. He's I, I, like, I don't know why yeah. our mind automatically goes to that route. Or I've had people that say to me, uh, I'm going through this and this and this right in my life. And I know it's because I haven't been reading my Bible or, you know, like they think God it's is like God's punishing, he's you. punishing yeah. them for not being in his word. And I don't think God works like that. Yeah. Um, you, you know, uh, for, for you and Alyssa, um, you know, when you were growing up, we had you clean your room. And I was talking to my mom about this the other day. We would ask you to clean your room just because we wanted a clean room. The clean room didn't make you our child or allow you to have a space in our house. It just was, we want you to clean your room. It wasn't like, if you don't clean your room, you're gone. If yeah. you don't clean your room, you don't have our love. You have our love and you have our house and you have, because you're our blood. And I think that's the kind of stuff we got to remember because, you know, first John says that we're, 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 chi- we're children of God, that children of God's a big deal, right? You're mm-hmm. called his child. So if he calls you his child, uh, he's not going to, you know, boot you out for not reading his word. Does he love for you to be in, in his word? Yeah. But sure. he loves you no matter what. Yeah. Um, he'll love you into hell, <laughs> you know, yeah. if you choose not to choose him. So I think there's a mindset that we have to somehow come to grips with that, I can't earn grace. I can't earn God's love. I just get it. And I think that kind of gives us now, if you understand that it makes you want to be more engaged because what Paul talks about is Paul talks about knowing what's right and continuing to do what's wrong, which cheapens the grace of God. So what he's saying is, uh, you say yes to Jesus and then you give your heart to Jesus and continue to live the life you used to live. And it's basically willful disobedience is what Paul calls it, willful disobedience. What that actually means is giving God the middle finger. Mm -hmm. Basically what it means is I can, you've saved me, and so now I get heaven and I can live however I want. Yeah. That's not how we do it. How we do it is I appreciate the goodness of God. I appreciate the grace of God. I appreciate the goodness of God, the salvation of God. So because of that, it makes me want to do what's right. I'm not going to willfully disobey him. I'm going to live for him knowing I'm going to mess up every now and then. But my goal in life is not to because my goal in life is to be like him. So if I recognize he's done everything for me, it makes me want to every day live the best I can for him. And, and so I think that's that idea of just understanding you can't earn God's love. Yeah. You can't earn grace. You can't earn salvation. It's freely given. That being said, once you receive it, you do want it. I do want to read God's word. I do want to tie. Yeah. I do want to give. I do want to serve because I recognize who's I, who's I am and who I am because of him. And because of that, now it's not a religious thing. It's a relationship thing. Yeah, for sure. And thank goodness we can't earn it because we would never live up to the standards to earn it. Yeah. And, and if we could have earned it, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come. So right. by us trying to earn his love, what we're saying is I don't need you. Yeah. But we do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's tough. It's a difficult concept, but at the same time, it's, it's really not. Yeah. Like it's, it's there. hundred percent. Just take it and have a relationship with Jesus. I mean, that's literally all, all it takes. Well, but isn't it funny how we do, like I've talked to people before that say, I, um, I mean, it's kind of a, an interesting concept, but it's like, I tithe because I want God to bless me. I'm yeah. Like, ah, man, that that's the wrong, like, Man, I, t- I tithe because I love God. Now, that being said, there is a blessing of God that comes from that. For but sure. my intentionality is not I'm going to give to get. It's I'm going to give because I've been given to. Yeah. The, the byproduct of that is blessing, but I'm not going to give to get a blessing. I'm going to give because he's been a blessing. If that, it, Yeah, that makes sense. sense. I, th- I think a lot of it is it's just the heart behind it. everything yeah. you do. Like right. God knows the heart. He can see the action, right. but he knows the heart behind it. So right. if you are reading the Word, say you do miss a few days. God knows your heart. If you actually genuinely want that relationship with him, he's not going to be upset with you for missing a few days as exactly. long as you keep reading because exactly. you want that relationship. But if you miss a few days just because you're reading the Bible just to read the Bible, just to check it off your checklist, and that's yeah. a whole nother conversation. Or if people think it's it's quantity over yeah, quality. Yeah. Like, well, I didn't read my Bible today for 10 minutes. I would guarantee you God loves it if you're in his word for 30 seconds. Yeah. If you are giving him that amount, of, like if mom shoots me a text, hey, I love you. That means more than like 
is it great when she FaceTimes me or sends me a paragraph? Yes. But even just the quick, I love you is like, you're thinking about me. Yeah. I think that's the same concept with God as our heavenly father. He wants us to know, like you're thinking about me. Yeah. And I think that means more to him than anything. For sure. Yeah. All right. Three. So you already touched a little bit on this on Sunday, Yeah. but uh, can you explain the difference between justification and sanctification? Yeah. Justification is uh, how God makes you right. Okay. Right. So justification, mm-hmm. think about it like this. Justification, just as if I'd never sinned, justified, okay. just as if I'd never sinned. So Jesus, just like because of the death on the cross, right? You are justified. What that means is without Jesus, you're wrong, but with Jesus, you're made right. So justification makes you right. Sanctification makes you like Jesus. Gotcha. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, justification is is a one-time thing. Sanctification is an ongoing process, right? So justification is I need righteousness because without Jesus, I'm unrighteous, right? Mm -hmm. So justification makes us right before God because when Paul says, when you give your heart to Christ, you put on Jesus. So when God sees you, he doesn't see you, he sees Jesus, right? So you're made right because he sees Jesus and not you. So justification yeah. makes you right in the eyes of God. Sanctification makes you like Jesus the rest of your life. And that will continue. That's a process that will never stop until, until the day you die. Right. Um, or Jesus comes back. So if, if you are being sanctified, what that means is that means that if you sin, right. How can I say this? Okay. Let's say you sin and you're like, Oh my gosh, I just did this. I just gossiped. I just threw a whole string of cuss words together. I just lost my temper. I just, whatever. If you recognize that and you're like, gosh, I don't want to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a good sign. It's not a good sign if you don't know that. Yeah. So like everyone out there going, like, I just hate that. I'm such a sinner. Well, if you know you're a sinner, <laughs> that's a good sign. Yeah. Right. It's when you don't know, um, the sanctification process is that you might've said 37 cuss words today. Tomorrow you say 34. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you say 30, then the next day, cause the goal is that you're trying to be better on a daily basis, not because you're trying to make you better, but because you're trusting him to make you better. And if you allow him to make you better, that means more of you dies off some more of him lives. So if you're cussing less, every, I don't know why I'm just using this as an example. <laughs> if, you, if you're like a, an avid really cusser problem, out yeah. there, I'm just saying, you know, but what I'm saying is the goal would be, um, my, my human nature wants to cuss yeah. the Holy spirit doesn't want me to use coarse, coarse language, right? Or bad language or whatever. So then that would be that every single day I want to become more like Jesus. So yeah. I would do that less. Um, I talked about the, the willful disobedience, right? I talked to so many people or I see people that say yes to Jesus on a Sunday mm-hmm. and they continue. It's like that. I got heaven, but now I'm going to continue to live my own life. Yeah. You don't do that. When you say yes to Jesus, right? The justification part is I have now been saved for heaven. And so my path now is I'm going to heaven, right? So I no longer live for the world. I now live for God. Yep. Um, a, a church word is repent, right? Remember, remember Peter, when he preached, he said, repent and be baptized. It wasn't like be baptized and repent. It right. was repent and be baptized. Repentance means 180. Re- a repentance means I'm turning my back from what I used to do to now go towards who I need to be like. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people say yes to Jesus, but don't repent. Yeah. Right. They want restoration without the repentance. And I think what you have to say is I repent. So I'm, I'm living a sinful life. I need Jesus. So I'm turning away from my sinful life now to live for Jesus. Uh, Repentance is one of those words that's like not talked about much in church anymore. It's such an important word. Mm -hmm. So important. And when the Holy spirit came on Peter, he had the words to preach. He said, repent and be baptized. Just, Hey, be baptized. No, turn away from the life you used to live and now live the life he's called you to live. And I think that's the justification, sanctification. Justification is I am made right because of God. Sanctification is now I'm becoming like Jesus. And that's a process that will never end. That's a process ongoing. And that's a process that we want. Yeah. But you've got to repent and turn away from who you used to be to be sanctified into who he wants you to be. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of us, when we say yes to Jesus, we just want to sign the contract to eternity. 100%. Without, looking, without thinking there's any terms and conditioning to it. Yeah. So you just think you're signing an empty agreement, an empty contract. Yeah. And um, that's not even the right way to look at it because it's not a contract. God's going to let you do what you want to do. But at yep. the same time, if you 
say yes to Jesus, you are saying yes to living like Jesus. You are saying yes to being justified and sanctified for the rest of your life, you know? Yep. So it's it's an ongoing process, and every day might you might cuss 37 times. Yeah. Cuss 37 yeah. times or whatever. You're not going to be perfect. No one's ever going to be perfect, even if you are trying to be sanctified. Yeah. Even if you are trying to be just like Jesus every day, we're still going to mess up. That's who we are. It, it's kind of like, dude, you know, I'm thinking about this one. Like, let's say you, you and Alyssa are in high school, right? Or you're in middle school. <clears throat> and you tell mom and I, like, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for giving us a house to live in. Thanks for giving us food on the table. Thanks for taking care of us, whatever. Uh, helping us put gas in our car, whatever the case may be, right? You, you, tell us you appreciate us, but then you never abide by our guidelines. Yeah. Right. So you're, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I love you. But then you always disobey us. You always dishonor us in public. And then we're like, dude, well, you say you love us, but I really don't see the action to follow. I think that's the same thing with repentance. I love you, Jesus. Then if you really do love him, then you're going to live for him and honor him with your life and give him your soul. Like you're, you know what I mean? So I think that's the whole thing of like, do you really, Yeah. Do, if you really love him, then you're want to going to be made into him, yeah. into his likeness, into his image. And so uh, just don't say you do actually live like you want to. Yeah. And I think that's where like this whole Galatians chapter two, you know, when, when, you know, Galatians chapter five, when, when Paul's talking, I think he's just going, listen, dude, listen, you just, you can't earn it. You yeah. can't earn it. So just like trust him for it, live for him and let him do the work and stop trying to work because all you're doing is messing up and acting like you think you know it all, but you really don't. Cause right. if you could fix yourself, he would have had to come. Yeah. He yeah. wouldn't have to come. So, and it's, it's not even living like Jesus for the purpose of Jesus, knowing that you love him. It's yeah. also to show others what a life change that Jesus can make 100%. in your life, you know? Right. Because if you say yes to Jesus and you go back out doing the same exact things, people are thinking Christians are fake. And that's the last thing we want because that's the furthest thing from the <laughs> truth, you know? Yep. Once you are a Christian, there is life change that takes place. So, so you can life. say you're a Christian, but if there's no life change that takes place, then you're not really a Christian. Yep. People so, should see it. Yeah. It, it, like our goal is to let people see Jesus through us. So if we say yes to Jesus, but keep living our old life, people are like, well, I don't need him because I'm still living my old garbage. And what's the difference? You know what yeah. I mean? I had a professor in college that said, um, some people say yes to Jesus for, fi for fire, fire insurance. That just means you just don't want to go to hell. Now that I'm not going to hell, I can just live the life I want to live. No, yeah. then you honor Jesus with the life he gave you to live. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the difference. Yeah, we're supposed to be fishers of men, so bringing him to the surface yeah, instead 100%. of pushing him further down. Oh, oh so, okay, all right. You know, oh, all right, I hear that. So that's that's kind of yeah. the goal here. It's not like just that. to show Jesus that we love him. It's to show others how much we love Jesus 100%, and buddy. let them know that we are making the right decision. I love that. Okay. Mom so. loves it. She's taking notes right now. <laughs> Look at her. She's diligently on the phone over there. <laughs> Next question. She's like, oh, fishers of men. That's good. That's Bring good. Him to the top. Don't push them down. I love this right now. I love my boys. Number four. I love my boys. I love my boys. <laughs> Uh, I get so many questions about the word religion. Yeah. Uh, can you explain what uh, what it means when we say that Christianity is all about relationship over religion? Yeah. This is so stinking cool, man. And if you look in Genesis chapter 3, uh, we've talked about this before, but when, when God creates Adam and Eve, right, he, remember, he, he, he's like, man, this is, this is so good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's got to be experienced. Basically, what God created us for was relationship. Right. And then he hated that man was alone and created woman for a relationship. And then God did a relationship with man and woman, Adam and Eve. Remember Adam and Eve sin, right? He told them not to do eat of the tree, they ate of the tree, and they hid. The Bible says they sewed together fig leaves and hid. The Bible says in Genesis three that 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 Adam hears God walking through the garden. Now, there's so much theological question on this. Like, did God actually take on human form and go for a walk? Was it a spirit taking a walk? We don't know. At the end of the day, God can do whatever he wants to yeah. do. He's God. He could have come in physical form, whatever. What I read into that, right, theologically speaking, what I read into that is that God took walks with Adam and Eve in the garden. Was it his spirit? Was it his physical? Uh, he took on physical. We, we don't We don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But Adam's, I heard you walking, right? How did Adam know if he hadn't experienced this before with God? I mm -hmm. heard you walking, and I was afraid, so I hid. Um, and God goes, where are you? 
Now, did God really come looking for them because he didn't know where they are? Like, did God really come looking for them? He was like, oh, Adam, where are you? I'm, I, no, yeah. he came looking for them because Adam hid from him. So what God came to do was take a walk to restore a relationship, right? So religion says, oh, crap, I messed up. I got to hide. Relationship says, I messed up. I got to go to God. Yeah. And so I think what we do in religion is we hide and God comes looking. So at the end of the day, God gave us Jesus as a sacrifice because he missed walking with man. Yeah. And that shows me that God wants a relationship. What God wants to do is God wants to walk with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to experience life with us. He wants us to love him like he loves us. And so when we go hide from him, he comes looking for us. What did Jesus say? I came to seek and save the lost. I came to give you not a religion of do's and don'ts, a relationship of what I'm going to do that now we can have together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that idea that so many people are looking at. I have to pray this many times a day. I have to do this. They're looking for all the things they have to do. And religion says, says do relationship says done. Yep. And, and I think it's just important for us to understand that relationship is walk. You know, I, I was, I was telling the mom when she was in the hospital, the, the man, I just kept thinking every day, like I want her to get better. Cause I miss talking with her. Mm -hmm. I miss talking with her. I miss, I miss us uh, spending time together. And I think that's what sin did to us and God. It distanced us. And God just came looking for Adam and Eve going, I just, hey, God, what's going on? Like, I know what you did, but I'm coming looking for you because you're hiding from me. Yep. And I think what God wants is that relationship, that restoration so that we wouldn't hide from him, hide from him, but spend time with him, have a walk with him, have a conversation with him. And so that's the difference between religion and relationship. Relationship says I have to do to earn relationship says religion says, I have to do to earn relationship says uh, God did so I can be uh, mm -hmm. and I think that's the difference of it yeah you, you know the the saying you don't know how good something is until it's gone right you're never going to experience that with Jesus and that's the tough part because right he's always going to be there ready for relationship with you no matter how far you run away you're always going to have him right there you just have to ask for it you're yep. just going to have to want that relationship yep. so it's better for you to realize that because he's never going away. 100%. So it, it's it's good. I love the fact that it's relationship over religion. Religion, you have to hit so many goals. You have to do all these certain things in order to earn freedom. Yeah. That we, that's the whole thing. It's re Religion is earning something. Yeah. Relationship is you have it, so just live in it. Well, and everyone always says that Jesus did, a, did away <clears throat> with the law. No, he, he didn't do it. He, he didn't, abol he didn't ab abolish the law. He fulfilled the law. Like, yeah. he, he took on our sin because we could— the Ten Commandments were, it's not like you live by these yeah. and then you're set free. The Ten Commandments were a guideline to let us know you can't live by those. <laughs> like you can't, you're, you're, you're going to lie. You're going to like, that wasn't the idea that if you keep these, uh, then you'll be fine. The idea was like, you can't keep these. Yeah. And so Jesus didn't come to abolish it, but to fulfill it. So if all you do is have a guideline to go, if I just do these 10 things, then I'm good. At the end of the day, you can't do those 10. Cause yeah. what, what did Jesus say? He's like, you're talking about committing adultery. I'm like, if you look at her lustfully, you've already done it. Mm -hmm. So in our minds, we're like, it's the act of. No, it's a thought process. Of. It's yeah. the attitude of. And so I think there's so many things that start in the brain that go to the heart that come out in the hands. But I think what he's saying is at the end of the day, you got to recognize that you can't, you're on your own, you are so weak and you are so fragile and you are so broken and so distant. And you're trying to make it up with religion. But you can't, which is why I came not to abolish it, to fulfill the law so that you get a relationship with me. Yeah, so good. All right, this brings me to the last question. Okay. So uh, freedom brings us victory instead of defeat. So how can we live in that victory without uh, resorting back to our old ways? I think the best way is I've used this illustration 4,000 times, but it fits so well. Um, when, when I was coaching your, your football team, you know, mm -hmm. And if there was a day where maybe you guys were anxious for the game, nervous for the game, which you shouldn't have been because we were always undefeated. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> when I coached, um, <laughs> I digress. Faith, just so you know. Um, if you were anxious about a game, right? The other players were bigger, whatever. And you had games where there was some nervousness, right? Or your team was nervous. Mm -hmm. And their team didn't have enough players. So – they automatically had to forfeit because they didn't have enough players. And then we would let them borrow a player, our worst one. And we would let them, <laughs> which was never awesome. He was the best. Um, but we would let them borrow a player, right? And then you guys played with such freedom and such confidence. And I would always ask you why. You're like, because we already run. Yeah. We already won. This game doesn't mean anything. Um, 
because you already had the freedom. To just, we can just try new stuff. And then you guys would, it didn't matter. You'd run, you'd throw. Like we saw guys in our team that were so timid come alive and we had little runners that were like, what the heck is, it? but they didn't care because <laughs> yeah. the game was won. I think that's got to be the idea in life that you have when you have victory over defeat through Jesus is understanding it's already been won. Does that mean there's there's going to be difficulty in life? Yeah, Jesus said in this life you will have troubles, right? Uh, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are on your spiritual journey. You're going to have rough rough patches in life. The concept or the point is this, is that even when you have defeat physically or defeat financially or you feel like you're up against the wall, Jesus still won. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is not to have victory in this life, but victory in the next one. I think too many people want victory in this one. And so because we want victory in this one, we fight for victory in this one, which he fought for victory for the next one. Yeah. And I think that's the idea of the concept is to recognize that in this life is going to be difficult, but my faith is in him. And he says that, you know, we are more than overcomers, right? I've overcome the world. So I think the idea or the concept that all of us need to have is this. The concept is, is that we've already won. Mm -hmm. We won because Jesus won. So if you get Jesus, you've won. He overcome death. He overcame, overcame death, overcame the grave, overcame sin. He overcame it. Uh, you can have that same thing when you have Jesus. So the victory of the death is waking up every single day over defeat is recognizing uh, I've already won because Jesus already won. It may not mean in this life everything's going to be they want it. I want it to, but in the next life, I get what he's asked me to have because, yep. or what's he allowed me to have because I have him. Yeah, for sure. That's great. <sighs> That's it. How'd you feel with that? That was pretty good. How was it, babe? First one? Excellent. Oh, look at her. It's been hard for her to concentrate because she's been checking me out the whole time. But what do you think? <laughs> it's the new Mullah Erica. You like it? Mm-hmm. It's on point today. Faith, how'd it go today? 11 out of 10. Whoa, oh, 11 That's out good. of 10. I said some great points in there. Hashtag bring them up. Don't push them down. (laughs) Uh, Season two, episode two. Season two, episode two. See you next week, everybody. Well, hey, everybody. We hope you loved this episode of Afterthought. If you did like it, make sure you can comment. Let us know your thoughts. Share it with a friend. Hey, we're dropping new material every single Wednesday. We know you like the video, so leave a like. And subscribe because, like you said... We're going to have a video coming every Wednesday. Turn on those notifications so you know when it comes out. You can check it out. See you next week.